Could the future of Europe's energy supply lie here, in the Sahara? The renowned physicist Gerhard Knies is convinced that the desert holds the key, and he's not alone in that view. Seven years ago, I began building up a network of specialists who know something about this field. And there were specialists in this region too, in Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, also in Libya, Egypt, Jordan, and here on the Arabian Peninsula, and even a few Europeans. We developed this concept together, and now we've come under pressure to implement the project quickly. Because no one knows whether we're already speeding toward a climate catastrophe or not. The technology to stop climate change is already in use here in Spain at the Andesol Solar Thermal Power Plant. The German company Solar Millennium had a part in developing it. The steam turbines are driven by solar power and provide electricity for 200,000 people. The plant costs 300 million euros to build, but how realistic is it to think that such plants will soon be operating in the Sahara? At Cairo University, scientists have been working on these plants for years. The power plants will only need to cover a fraction of the desert landscape, according to Professor Adel Khalil. Yeah, you can see from this map how small the area uh, covered by solar thermal collectors can supply the demand for electricity for all the Middle East and North Africa. And uh, this area uh, to supply the requirement for uh, Europe and this for the world. Between Egypt and Germany, during the but the power plants will cost 350 billion euros to build. Then there's the special power lines leading to Europe, which are expected to cost another 50 billion. Many investors will be needed if Desert Tech, as the project is called, is ever to become a reality. That's why Gerhard Knies is currently seeking political support in Berlin. Many people say the project is too expensive, others that it's too uncertain. But the German government has already shown interest. For the first time, we're now seeing that all the parties are seriously discussing this project. The debate is now focused on how this energy can best be generated. From my point of view, it's the investors who will decide how it is to be done. Investors invest in a power plant and have to recoup their investments by selling the electricity. Potential investors are already waiting in the wings. For example, the Munich Re Group, the world's largest reinsurance concern, and Deutsche Bank. But electricity companies like E.ON and RWE are also interested. About 20 major firms want to form a consortium on July 13th. Siemens wants to be a part of it too. In 2005, the technology company laid the world's longest undersea electric cable connection between Australia and the island of Tasmania. Here too, renewable energy is transported via a high voltage direct current cable. The idea and that vision it has long been known that a great volume of solar energy is available in the desert. And the technology for solar thermal power plants has been around for decades as well. The same with high voltage direct current cable transmission, which we developed decades ago and have been operating successfully. But what has changed now is that our technology has advanced further. It's far more efficient now. And we are facing the biggest challenge of all, climate change. The companies have realized that investing in solar energy now could pay off in the billions soon. 
Over the next three years, a concrete plan is to be drawn up for building the power plants in North Africa. Where the plants will be exactly located has yet to be decided. The goal is to generate 15% of Europe's electricity with the aid of an inexhaustible source of energy.